very much. And as I yield to the chairman of the full committee, we have just uh, passed a one-stop shop that deals with a lot of those issues. Thank you. I yield to the chairman of the full committee, uh, the distinguished gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chief Holt, we've just heard testimony from uh, Mr. Brewer that the causes of our gun violence problem are lack of fathers, and from uh, Professor uh, Lott that uh, there's no effective difference between a, uh, an AR-15 and a single shot uh, a gun. Could you comment on this testimony, please? In my experience in law enforcement, I think it's a huge difference between AR-15 assault weapon and a, a nine millimeter or 38 revolver. Uh, I think the key is my officer was killed with an assault weapon. Uh, recently, as two months ago, I responded to a Detroit police assist where a high-powered pistol with an extended magazine uh, shot an officer and killed him from the back of an apartment building. He was lured into this trap. Uh, I, I think it's something to be said for a strong family background. But I don't think that is the solution to what we're facing right now with gun violence in the United States, and particularly in my city. Thank you very much. Uh, in other words, this testimony is with respect to the prevention of gun violence, idiotic, and I agree with you on that. Uh, Mr. Hain, this year we were able to make some progress on gun violence with the passage of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, yet there's still much more to be done to prevent gun violence. As this legislation gets implemented, how will it make our community safer, and what will happen if we don't take additional actions to build on the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, such as the legislation that uh, passed in this House, but not in the Senate. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Chairman Adler, for the question. Um, and the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act is a really important step. I, I would say um, a number of policies uh, and a package that undoubtedly is going to save lives, uh, but it's not going to solve gun violence overnight. Uh, I would actually mention the fact that the, by, that the universal background check, something that 90% of Americans support, what would serve as a foundation for all gun laws to function, was off the table during that negotiation. So uh, while we were incredibly excited about things like addressing the dating partner loophole, the historic funding for extreme risk law implementation, uh, funding for community violence intervention programs, which addresses a lot of the root causes that we're talking about, community investments in order to address the cycles of gun violence, all of that stuff is going to have tangible impacts in communities, but we do have a lot more to do to address gun violence in all of its forms, and, and this committee has done an incredible job of putting some of those solutions forward. Uh, thank you. Chief Holt, uh, un unarmed bystanders uh, disarmed the shooter at Club Q in Colorado Springs, and law enforcement was on the scene within minutes, yet five lives are still lost. What does this say about the limitations of law enforcement when we allow assault weapons in our communities? You know, I think the issue to respond to that question, and I'm gonna to respond to it as how we train and how we respond to something like that. Uh, proper training, preparation, resources, usually prevent these sort of incidents or allow you to respond to these sorts of incidents. The incident that happened in Uvalde has been Discuss, examine, dissect it, and results given. But I think what we do, when you have an active shooter like that with an assault weapon, we don't stand by. Well, we go in with our training and with the proper resources to neutralize that threat and prevent any more collateral injuries as such that took place there. Uh, thank you. Um, Ms. Melchiono, when you went through this experience, you were seven years old. But as you've grown older, there have been other sh school shootings, Parkland, Santa Fe, Oxford High School, Uvalde. Each of these was a mass shooting in a school campus, two of them with assault rifles and high fatalities, just as you experienced. What was it like to hear about these events? It was definitely re-traumatizing. The parallels between Uvalde really uncovered a lot of trauma that I had experienced in the past. 
um, growing older with these memories that I experienced on December 14th, 2012. Um, they're always in my mind, and as I grow older, processing it over and over again is hard because you think of it in different ways and you understand it in different ways, and it makes you question why we keep allowing this in our country and we, we don't take any action. And Parkland, I think, was one of the first times when I really questioned why we choose to live like this in our country. We know that a lot of these shooters are obtaining these AR-15s and their guns legally, and we need to implement change to make it harder. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. As I yield to Mr. Stuvey for his time, I want to thank all the members that have come to this hearing uh, and recognize the gravity, uh, the gravity of this 